Yes, welcome back to the session of Voltage Connections. In last class, we were solving about the Voltage Connection problems. We will continue with the Voltage Connection problems now in the session also. And along with that, I will teach you how to solve the eccentric connection problems. Okay. Now, we will continue one more problem. Determine the adequacy. Determine the adequacy of the fastener. The equation of the fastener, as shown, as shown, when twenty mm dia when twenty mm dia grade. Indium diagrade 4.6 volts 4.6 volts are used assume assume that the strength of the volt assume that the strength of the column flange assume that the strength of the column flange and the structural T section structural T sections does not do not go on the design or go on the design okay should neglect the playing action here so the figure is like this the organ section T section has been attached. And it's angle the measure like this four three five five dollars theorem and the ultimate load is three fifty kilonewtons. Okay. This is a T section. Now, before starting the problem, as usual, data to be collected. So, PO is 350 kilonewtons. So, it is an PO is an inclined force. So, resolve this PO into PUX and PUY. So, with an angle 345 means it will be 36.86 degree. I think people you know how to calculate 36.86 degree. So, PUX will be equal to 350 into cost 360. 6.86 so it is 280.03 kilonewton similarly puy will be is equal to 350 into vertical it is sign component so it will be 210.6 kilonewtons so bolt grade it is 4.6 fu base 400 newton per mm square Now this looking at this section it is combination of shear as well as the tension correct so your bolt will be here so this is the combination of shear as well as the tension we know that so whenever it is combination of shear and tension if you pay the for pair number 76 we have the formula when bolts are subjected to Combined shear, combined shear and tension. Prefer class 
10.2.3 is 800. Page 76, we have formula PSD divided by PD B whole square plus TB divided by TDB whole square should be lesser than or equal to 1, where we know that VSP is nothing but the factor shear force acting on the board. VDB is the design shear capacity of the capacity, which is given in the class 10.3.2, whereas TB is the factor tensile force acting on the board, and TDB will be design tension capacity of the so bolt is 10.3.5 will be okay. We'll calculate this now. So VSP, you have to calculate VSP, it is nothing but direct shear force. So Total shear force factor factor shear force VSB is equal to PU divided by number of bolts. So PU is 210.6, so it's 6, so it will be 35.1 kilonewton per bolt. Correct. So TB will be is equal to PUX divided by number of bolts. So it is 280 divided by 6. So it is 46.66 kilonewton per bolt. Then bolts are subjected to single shear. As per the figure, it is a single shear. So bolts are subjected to single shear. So whenever it is single shear, we know the shear capacity of the bolt. VDSB is equal to FUP divided by root 3 into gamma MB into NN ANB plus NS ASP. Since it is a single shear, directly you can write the formula as 400 divided by root 3 into factor of 71.25 into 1000 conversion into 0.78 times of 5 by 4 into D square is 20 square. Correct. If it is a double shear, it is 1.78 times. So it is 45.27 kilonewton is the shear capacity of the bolt. Now, then calculate TNB. TNB 0.9 FUB AN should be less than FYB ASB. ASP into gamma mb by gamma m naught so find out these values so 0.9 times of fub is 400 in is 0.78 times of 5 by 4 into d square is 20 square it should be lesser than 400 into 0.6 it is a yield stress into asp is 0.5 by 4 into 20 square it is in the grass area divided by 1.25 is gamma mb, 1.1 is gamma m0, correct. So we will get the values of 88.215 kilonewtons, which is not lesser than 85.679 kilonewton. So what does it indicate? See generally we should note that the yield strength of the bolt is not available in the table 11 one, we should calculate the yield strength, correct. FIB 400 into 0.6 that is I'm mentioning here. There's a note always. They don't give you should calculate from the directly from the code book of table. If it's not available, calculate directly, which I have taught in the previous classes. Okay. Now what I should do since it is not lesser than this, take the lower value. So that is TDB is equal to 85.67 divided by 1.25. So it is 64 so that is 68.48 and then whichever is the least take this so therefore you are as per the formula for the both subjected to combination here building to put up the formula now 35.1 by 45.27 whole square plus 46.66 divided by 68.48 whole square should be lesser than or equal to 1 so this is 1.606 which is greater than 1 so what does it indicate here 6 bolts of 20 mm of 4 grade 4.6 is not are 
now insufficient to carry the load of 350 applying at the joints so this is the conclusion you have to make therefore hence six number of 20 mm dia bolts dia property 4.6 grade bolts are insufficient to carry factored load of PU that is 350 kilo. Okay, this is how the problem. Okay. Once you complete this, you can use this HSFZ board in space of your uh, normal grade board and check the answer. Same questions you can use all with the HSFZ boards and you can take check the answers. Okay. Next thing we'll we'll go for the eccentric bolt connections. What are this eccentric bolt connections? See, whenever if the force applied does not pass through the center of the gravity or CG point of the joint, then such joints carries a movement in addition to an axial direct force. Such type of connections are known as eccentric connections and they are also known as bracket connections. Okay, look at this two figures are being there here. You can see here. two forces this is there are two cases generally which is one is line of action of eccentric loading is in the plane of group of bolts or one more case this is the line of action of eccentric bolting that is in a plane perpendicular to the plane of groups of the bolts okay in the first case you can look at this force is here at the free end so if this is eccentric distance e then moment is equal to P into E, P into E, correct, correct, then obviously you can take it as F1, force will be P divided by N, number of volts, and okay, so automatically you can calculate the corresponding moments, FP, FP or F1, FM, what is this modular moment, so for PE, M into radius of if I have the four bolts if I draw the radius between the bolts then I can measure the radius this distance from here to here then I can solve this and get the load due to direct shear along with the load due to the torsional moment okay this is the figure in other case eccentric bolting connections where the bracket is separately connected to here where the direct shear tension and compression will be above and below the neutral axis we can look at the figure from here the eccentricity will start from here to here whereas the eccentricity will be measured from the, in the first case it will be measured from the center of the bolt line to the loading part but where are we here it is from the end of the flange to this center point of the your bolting got it we will solve these two problems about this eccentric connections So first case, so eccentric connections so if this is a section it's a fluid This is a force applied. Okay. 
now let me assume there are four number of words test 1 2 3 4 where are the x and y axis okay the line I draw a line from center of point to the bold this will be the radius 1 R1, R2, R3, R4. Okay. So directly, if you look at the figure, four bolts are there. So center we have the load P, obviously. Your load due to direct shear can be calculated by load divided by number of bolts. Correct. Load divided by number of words I can calculate. So, how to calculate the movement? So, we know the distance from this point to this point it is eccentricity. From the center line to the force line, it is eccentricity. So, moment will be equal to P into E. Okay. The force due to the torsional moment can be calculated by moment along with the radius divided by summation of the radius so there are three things here so first thing is calculate load due to direct shear that is fp so fp is equal to p divided by n where n is the number of volts then torsional moment i can calculate So, m is equal to p into e, then radial shear, so radial distance will be your r. So, finally, you can calculate load due to torsional moment that is fm is equal to moment to r in the radius by summation of r square so finally i can calculate the resultant load r is equal to fp square plus fm square plus two times of fp fm plus theta i think you learned this thing when you have studied the basic civil engineering whenever you design the force and its characteristics correct same thing will be applied here also okay we'll solve one problems but you can understand easily about this a bracket connection shown in figure is with m24 m24 volts volts of grade of grade 4.6 and fe 410 steel is the volt pattern And plate adequacy plate adequate for the given load a bracket connection shown in figure is with the m24 volts of grid 4.6 and a potent plate is is the bolt pattern and fat plate adequate for the given load so we have to check whether it is a adequate bow plate under the bolt pattern for the given load so they have given the 
record connection like this. Okay, so they have given you one ten kilonewtons, one ten kilonewton. So with six bolts, so this will be your E value. Okay, the thickness of the gusset plate is the one ten mm. Right, and then they have given you the distance of a distance and the pitch. The edge distance they have measured as. Sixty, seventy-five. Now this distance they have given you plus one twenty-five mm. Okay. So this much information they have given, and the distance from first bolt to the force it is one fifty. So this much information they have given in your problem. Now I have to solve the problem. First calculate the load due to direct shear. This is easy. Load due to direct shear. So your P is equal to P divided by N. So P is 110 divided by the number of volts is 6. So it is 18.33. Kilonewtons. Now find out the radius. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 volts are there. So this will be your R and this will be your R1. So this is R1. So R1 is equal to 125 divided by 2 because the distance you are already given as 125 here. So it is 62.5 mm. And we know that this pitch distance they have given as 75. Using Pythagoras theorem, I can calculate the value of R. R is equal to square root of 75 square plus 62.5 square. So R will be 97.63 meters. Now, summation of R square. So four radius are there. This is R, this is R1. So one, two, three, 4 times of R1, 2 times of, sorry, 2 times of R1 and 4 times of R. Okay. I think this is making that in R only. Okay. This is R and this is R1. So 4 times of R plus 2 times of R1. So summation of R square is equal to. 4 times of 97.63 square 
plus 2 times of 62.5 square. So summation of R square is equal to 45.93 in 10 power of 3 millimeter square. That is summation of R square. Okay. Then dash node moment. M is equal to P into E. Look at this figure. So force is 110. I have to calculate E. So cadastral moment will be created here. I can calculate this. So M is equal to P into E. So M P is 110 into. So E I have to calculate. Look at here. From here to here it is 150. From here to here it is 125 divided by 2. Correct. So your E value will be 150 plus 125 divided by 2 nothing but it is 225 whole thing divided by 1000 so it is 23.375 kilometer meter what it then calculate load due to torsional moment So FM is equal to PE R divided by sigma square or you can write MR divided by sigma square. Directly you can take this, no problem. So 23.375 into 10 power of 3 into R is 97.63 and summation of it is 45.93 10 raised to 3. So your FM will be is equal to 49.67 km. So now I have got load due to direct shear and load due to torsional shear. Now calculate the angle. So cos theta will be is equal to looking at the figure, it is 62 cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse. So adjacent is 62.7 and hypotenuse is 97.63. So it is 0.6402. So resultant force on volt formula R is equal to square root of Fm square plus Fp square plus 2 times of Fm Fp cos theta. So it is square root of 49.67 square plus 18.33 square plus 2 times of 49.67 into 18.33 along with the cos cos is already calculated directly you can take it as 0 0.6402 so it is r will be equal to 62.99 kilo nothing but the 63 kilowatton is the resultant force on the bolt now calculate the bolt value bearing strength of the bolt and find out which is the least one for the adequacy of the bolt correct so if the look at the figure so it is The plate has been connected to the plunger, so automatically it is a single shear failure. If it rotate this like this, it is a single shear. Correct. So bolts are subjected to single shear. So shear capacity of the bolt. So V T S B is equal to F U divided by two three gamma M B into N M E N B plus N S E S B 
So if you be is 400 divided by root 3 into 1.25 into 1000. So single shear failure, so it is 0.7 times the power 4 into 24 square. So it is 65.19 kilonewton. Now I am going to calculate bearing capacity. Of the bolts VD PB is equal to 2.5 times of KB D into T into F U of the plate divided by gamma ML so KB will be taken as 1 thickness 10 mm D 24 mm you can easily okay I know how you know people how to calculate KB value which I have been discussing the last problems or well, in the last classes okay substitute the values 2.5 into 10 into 24 into 14 is the grade of the plate into 1.25 into 1000 so it is 196.8 kilonewton so therefore your bolt value will be shear capacity of the bolt so bolt value is one sorry sixty five point one nine kilometer correct so whenever you want to see the adequacy your bolt value should be lesser than the sorry your resultant force should be lesser than the bolt value since resultant force resultant load force is lesser than the bolt value the bolt pattern in the plate or adequate that was the question correct adequacy for withstanding the withstanding the force of 110 kilo control like this so whenever you want to check the adequacy your bolt value value the whatever you get the resultant value should, should be lesser than the bolt value okay okay same thing they will be having the same old problems check the adequacy to find out the resultant force in the examination also only one thing is you should know how to calculate the load due to direct shear then load due to torsional moment for this moment mpm into pe so finally once you get this torsional moment convert it into or get it a load to direct torsional shear moment find out the r summation of r theta this will be very easy bracket connections okay next problem we will do the next problem using the HFC bolts Next question, determine the, determine the maximum, determine the maximum load, determine the maximum load that can be transmitted, that can be transmitted at 30 degree, at 30 degree to the horizontal to the horizontal in which in which bracket connection in which bracket connection shown in figure shown in figure if the if the bolts of grid with the bolts of grid 8.8 .8 are used 
if the words of grade 8.8 are used and and bold sizes the bold size is of 24 mm 24 mm the plate thickness is the plate thickness is 10 mm okay if determine determine the load p if if the joint is considered if the joint is considered as first one slip joint slip joint second one second one non slip joint first as slip joint and second one as non slip joint so they want to find out the maximum load that can transmit it 30 degree to the horizontal which will be a backing connection shown in the figure if the bolt grade of 8.8 are used and bolt size is of 24 mm the plate thickness is 10 mm determine the load if the joint is considered as a slip joint and non slip joint okay so this is the figure they have given for you bracket connection Six words that I want for you. An inclination angle of P within 30 degree. Okay. And the distance they have telling it as 450. And this is 200 mm. Launch. This a distance also 60, pitch also they have given us 60. The distance between this and the distance is 120 mm. Okay, this is the thing they have given for you. Now I have to solve the problem, but look at this 8.8 .8 grade. So 8.8 .8 grade 22 by 24 mm. Diabolt. So FUB will be is equal to 830 Newton per square. Okay. So load due to direct shear. So FP is equal to P divided by N. Correct. So P is the one we have to cal calculate or we have to divide in mind. The electric KFP P, P as P only number of volts is six. So I can write it as 0.167 times of P. Correct. So next torsional moment. So, torsional moment. See, this is an inclined force. We have to resolve this force into sine uh, vertical component as well as the horizontal component. So, one is 30 degree with respect to base. So, it will be P sine theta and P cos theta for vertical and then horizontal respectively. Okay. So, torsional moment M is equal to P sine theta into 450 minus p cos theta cos 30 into 60 plus 60 correct this force if it is inclined towards it down p sin theta into 450 is the distance plus this force if it is horizontally it will meeting here 60 plus 60 so exactly at the center it will be meeting at the calculate the moment so it will be 60 plus 60 it is 120 correct i think this is better 60 plus 60
so horizontal into vertical distance vertical component into horizontal distance simple okay now whole thing divided by 1000 conversion factor kilo to kilo newtons so it is 121 0.8 p kilo newton meter this is a torsional moment got it next now calculate the r value so you look at the figure here there are two boards if i consider from the cg point sir my class martha in it yeah, I understand. When I do, you, you guys keep doing the same thing for me. Please, there will be sorry for So, R, R will be 60 square plus 60 square, then R1, 60 mm, come up for 20 minutes. Okay. So R will be value 84.85 mm. So summation of R square is equal to 4 into 84.85 whole square plus 2 times of 60 whole square. So it is 3599.809 mm square. This is summation of R square. Okay. The once you get summation of R, so what you will do? You will calculate the load due to torsional shear. Load due to torsional shear. Oh, sorry, torsional moment. Fm is equal to Mr divided by summation of R square. So 121.08 p into 85 84.85 what there by 35998.09 okay if you divide this you'll get point two times point two eight five p okay. now see since it is an inclination what we can take is so we'll take cast it as one this you should be taking no, whenever it is inclination take cast theta as one for inclination or are you inclined okay so r will result in force on the board will be equal to fp square plus fm square plus two times of fp fm cos theta so fp is 0.167 p square plus fm is 0.285p square plus 2 times of 0.167p into 0.285p so r will be 0 0.452 times of p slowly solve this it is easy actually it looks to be difficult but it is very easy problem okay now we got a result in force of 0 0.452 times of p now we have to calculate what is maximum force before that there is um, two conditions they have given one is slip joint and one is non-slip joint okay slip joint means we have to calculate this as normally that is shear capacity and bearing capacity and find out the maximum value of the p non-slip joint means considering it as an hsfg bolt and calculate the value of the p okay first we'll start with the case one of slip joint so slip joint we know so page number 75 i think you should never forget this formulas so shear capacity of the bolt vdsb is equal to fub divided by root 3 into gamma m naught into nn anb plus ns asb correct so it is 
830 divided by root 3 into 1.25 into 1000 into single shear failure. So it is 0.78 times of pi by 4 into d square is 24 square. So it is coming around 135.27 kilonewtons. So this is the shear capacity of the bolt. Now next bearing capacity. So they have not given Fe value. So to find out bearing we require the Fe value. So what we will do is assume Fe 540 grade bolt for the grade of steel. Okay. So Vd Pb is equal to 2.5 times of Kb into D into T into Fu P divided by gamma Mb. So take Kb directly as K1 thickness 10 mm. Okay. So substitute the value here 2.5 into 1. Two point five into one into twenty four into ten mm into five forty whole thing divided by 1.25 into 1000 okay so vdpb will be 259.2 kilonewtons okay therefore bolt value will be is equal to list of the bottle so it is 135.27 kilonewtons nothing but the shear capacity of the bolt now resultant force r is equal to 0 0.452 times of p so you know what is the bolt value now so the resultant force will be 135.27 kN. Therefore, P is equal to R divided by 0 0.452. So it is 299.26 kN. It is very simple. So just equate this value with the bolt value to the resultant force because both are resultant force only if we equate this i'll get the p value next condition non-step joint so vd sf is equal to mu f ne kh f divided by gamma mf okay mu f if it is not given take it as 0 0.52 table 20 of page 77 you will be getting the value directly as consider it as sand blasted with light resting sur surface you can take 0 0.52 so ne you can take it as 1 kh you can take it as 1 so your vdsf is equal to 0.52 into 1 into 1 into point net area is 0.75 times 78 times of 5 by 4 into 24 square into 830 into 0.7 whole thing divided by 1.25 into 1000 so the value will be 85.28 kilonewtons so this is VDSF so p value will be is equal to 85.28 divided by 0 0.5 0 0.452 is equal to 188.67 kilonewtons so look at my dear friends we have two values for the if it is a slip joint it is p value are getting at us 299 almost it is 300 kilonewtons whereas when we go for non slip joint it is 188.67 so, 
are getting for the both slip as well as the non slipper joints non slippery joint means slipper slipper joint is nothing but an ordinary board whereas non slip joint is an uses of the hsfc board okay so this is the conditions for the case one means where whenever it is in the line of action of the eccentric load is in the line of group of boards nothing but it is in nothing but whenever first of all eccentric connection is nothing but the line of action does not pass through cg point okay whenever it is an eccentric bolting is done for the first case this is how the we are supposed to solve the problem first only one thing three points here got maintain here is first can we calculate the direct shear from direct shear fp is equal to p divided by n then torsional moment moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance so force will be given there then you can calculate the eccentric distance so multiply this will get m is equal to p into e then immediately go for the torsional moment immediately calculate the load due to torsional moment fm is equal to mr divided by summation of r square this r and r square is from your figure the radius of distance so generally we should vary you should find out this distance so draw separately the board pattern and find out this distance using pythagoras theorem you can calculate the with you can calculate the angle along with the distance okay once you calculate this calculate the load due to torsional moment calculate fm once you get fp fm calculate cos theta and calculate the resultant load if they want to have the adequacy check the adequacy always your bolt value should be greater than the resultant force obtained if they ask you to check in the non slippery joint and sir non slipper joint or slip joint go for ordinary bolt as well as the hsf bolt and determine the using the formula of page number 76 and 77 of our is 800 2007 in the next class i will be solving about the eccentric connection whenever the second case where the line of action of the eccentric loading is in the plane perpendicular to the plane of the group of bolts that is the second case so and the, along with we will uh, discuss what are the advantages and the merits and demerits of the bolter connections and then we will solve some the some of the will give importance about some of the examination how to exam solve the problems in examination of the bolter connections okay thank you